story of David and Goliath is one of those stories of the ages of the little boy whipping the big giant. And uh, it, go, it goes, it, it, it's, a, it's bigger than life because people take that whole thought of, of overcoming some kind of an obstacle, the giants in our life. And so when I looked at this whole idea of home improvement, and I looked at different families in the Bible, I'll be honest, I kind of looked at David as a father and some of the mistakes that he made. But I wanted to see what it took actually for David to become a giant killer. And I discovered something that was really interesting, something for the first time ever. And that is that you had people on Goliath for 40 days had been saying, who's, who's going to get me? Who's going to kill me? And David said, had enough confidence that David said, I'll do it. And not only the Philistines and Goliath made fun of him afterwards, but even his own people, his own brothers, the military. They said, you're just a kid. The only thing you've ever done is watch daddy's sheep. And then David said something interesting. He said, well, I was taking care of dad's sheep. A bear and a lion came out and caught it. And I went out after him. And God gave me the victory. And if God can give me the victory over my dad's sheep, God can give me victory over God's sheep. I can whip this giant. And he was, he was, able, to, he was able to conquer the giant because of what he learned while he was a kid. It was that confidence when, it, when he was in his father's keeping, when he was taking care, when he was a little boy in his dad's sheepfold, that's where he learned the skill and the confidence and the trust to be able to one time, at one time when it came up, when the opportunity came up, to be able to kill a giant, to rise above all the other warriors, to rise above all the others, and eventually that notoriety earned him the place to become the next king of Israel. We know there's a lot of other things, but he proved himself. And here's what I want us to realize is this, is for those of, the, the, of us that are parents and even grandparents, the home life God has put as a preparation for the rest of their life. And God does a lot in preparation. And, and so here, here's, here's my first principle that I kind of pulled from this about preparation. And that is this. The key to success is confidence. And the key to confidence is preparation. What does that mean? L notice what David. David was confident. Not just in himself. Although he was confident in his skill and his experience, he said, I can do this. But not like a little kid that's never done it before says, I can do that. No, he had done it before. But it wasn't just confidence in himself. It was confidence in God. God did this for me. And he can do it again. And for us to kill a giant in our life, for us to become overcomers, for us to get victory, you got to be confident. It's not being cocky. It's not being macho. It's not being, hey, I got this. It's, it's actually a humble attitude that says, you know what? I can do this. Jesus called it meekness. Power under control. And that's what David had. He had a confidence. And that confidence came because he was prepared. Again, he didn't make it up. He didn't just come along and say, I can do this. He, he was prepared to do this. Preparation is the key. It is a big key. And, God, and, and not just in families, but just know this. God is continually preparing us for the next stage of our life. <coughs> Again, when we're children, God is preparing us for young adult. When we're young adult, God is preparing us for middle age. And God, God is continually preparing us for the next battle that we're going through. And this is, this is what I want to encourage you with overall. Whether or not you have little kids in the house, or you have teenagers, or whether you're grand, no matter who you are, just know this. You have a battle ahead of you that you don't know about yet. And some of you, the battles you have fought, you had no preparation for it. 
that phone call, that pain, that doctor visit, all of a sudden it turns your world upside down. And, and you didn't realize it, but God had been preparing you for that. And then after it's all over, you begin to say, you know what, yeah, I, d- I don't like the experience, or maybe you were an overcomer in the experience, but God, has pre- God prepared you. But know this, God is preparing you now, and you better, here's this, you better learn your lessons now, because when the situation comes down the road, you're not going to be prepared. And to be flat out honest, some of us weren't prepared for the battle that we found ourselves in. And you can't really totally prepare yourself, but we weren't prepared. My coach used to tell us in practice, the way you practice is the way you play the game. Go hard in practice, and you'll do it in the game. We We all know that. We all know that in life. You prepare yourself for something. I prepared myself to preach this message. And depending on how well I prepare, depending on how well you prepare whatever it is you're doing, the better you can do it. That's why we send, that's why we send kids to school. That's why we go to college. That's why we take extra training. That's why we do all these things, is to prepare ourselves for the future. And so here's another, here's another principle I think will help you in the whole idea of preparation. The best preparation for tomorrow is hard work today. That's the reason why some, sometimes we fail today. We didn't prepare very good yesterday. If you want to see changes in your life, you can't just, it's not, they're, not, they're not just going to happen. You got to prepare for them. David had skill. And I'll talk about this just in a second. That whole slingshot thing, that wasn't just Dennis the Menace, Opie Taylor knocking a bird out of the tree kind of a slingshot. That was a technological advancement at that time. I don't, ha- I don't have the skill level to do that. Okay? You put a rock in, in a little pouch, and you hold the two ends of the string together, and you wing it around. You saw the pick wing it around and let one of them go, and it goes straight where you want it. He had practiced that over and over and over again until he he was deadly. It was a skill. It was military. You read the rest of Scripture, other parts of Scripture. There were military men that that's what they did, spears and slings. It's kind of like Michael Jordan. Oh, we look at the greatest basketball player who ever lived, but you don't see the hours he spent on the free throw line practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. You see doctors and the things that they do, and the way sometimes we forget the practice and the practice and the clinicals and all the stuff, all the stuff they have to do to prepare, the hard work that it takes to be able to perform at that high level that they have. Oh, I... I want to learn how to play guitar. I don't want to practice. I got, a, I got a guitar at home. I have a banjo at home. You know why I don't play? I don't practice. There's a piano here. Barb just woke up one day, and all of a sudden, she said, Woo, my fingers feel good. And she starts playing the piano. Isn't that how it worked, Barb? Absolutely not. No. It, it takes practice. How many of you have ever had one piano lesson? One. Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. Josh. Yeah. Okay. Now, how many of you can play the piano? Good enough. Okay, be careful because I might put you up here. How many of you can play, how many of you can play the piano good? Raise your hand. Okay. A few. Did you see who they were, Barb? Okay. <laughs> Barb's, got, Barb's got her eye. Okay. Why aren't we as good as Barb? Not because Barb has an ability that we don't have, we don't possess, because she practiced. And so we have to, you have to work hard at it. And that's one of the things, we, 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 we want things, and, and that's what we have to train our children, teach our children. We have to teach them some things at home. I think my lesson, the, the, some of the, I think I'll make sure I get my lessons right here. Okay, here's, here's the next one. We may not be able to prepare the future for our children, but we can prepare our children for the future. We, this may be 
one of the few generations in America that have it worse than their parents in a lot of aspects. Financial, job, the world, the way the world looks, it's a crazy thing. We can't control what our kids, what it looks like. We can't. But we can prepare our children that whatever the future holds for them, they're going to make it. We can't change the future. We can't prepare the future. But we can prepare our kids. What are some, what are, I just want to look at this just real quickly. What are some things that David learned as a boy taking care of his dad's sheep? Some of them are in scripture and some of them we just assume because of that's where it is. Here's a few of those. Number one, he learned work. He learned how to work hard. Fewer jobs in the world are harder than being on the farm. Amen, Perry? Yeah. It'll wear you out. It's hard work. He wasn't just sitting on a rock strumming a little harp like they show in the you know, kids' Bibles. That's hard work. You gotta haul manure, you gotta take care of the sheep, you gotta bait, bandage them, you gotta do all that kind of stuff. It is hard. He learned how to do hard work. Kids learned, need to learn how to work. They're like, whoa, that was good. That was all from us adults, wasn't it? I didn't hear any kids say that. Okay. <laughs> they learn how to work. Second thing here duty, responsibility. He had a job. And he had his mommy out there, his daddy out there to tell him what to do. He had a job that he had to get it done. And he learned responsibility. And sometimes we need to give our kids some responsibility. To learn. Here's the hard part. As, and and I, I've raised four kids and they're all out of the house and stuff like that. But here, here's what I found out. I need to prepare my children to live without me. Because I, I may protect them from a lot of things, but I can't protect them from everything. And I need to let them live and, and prepare themselves. So, so duty, uh, he, he learned that. Another is courage. A bear and a lion? I'll be honest, I don't like, bears and lions scare me even at the zoo. You know, you see them if they roar, you know, a bear and a lion. No, he had courage. His mom, and, his mom and dad, at least his dad, it says his dad, put him in a situation that was fearful. That, that's crazy. But they allowed him to be in a difficult position to learn how to be courageous. And courageous isn't the absence of fear. It is doing the right thing in spite of fear. So he learned, he learned courage. He learned compassion. Now, if it had been me and it had been a lamb, I'd have let the lamb go. It would have been, it would have been dinner for that lion. Okay? He says, go ahead. I got more back here. Okay? But he had compassion. He cared about that lamb, and he went to protect that lamb. Yes, it was his duty, it was his responsibility, but if I had a kid and he came back and said, Dad, hey, lion and bear came out, yeah, I'm not touching it. I'm not going after, I'm not going after a lion and a bear just to get one of your lambs. But he was compassionate. Fifth thing we, he learned at home, he learned skill. He learned a skill. Now, granted, they're might not have been too much of a call for slingshotters in those days maybe there was but he learned some skill he learned some he learned some ability he learned how to do something and so sometimes we need to just teach our children what what they can do and he learned trust he learned trust in himself but he learned trust in God I wish you know our our children start off in the home completely dependent on us I mean for everything as a matter of fact, for the first nine months, they are 100% dependent on mom, for sure. And they're dependent, and then slowly but slowly, we begin to take them off of that dependence, and they begin to become independent. And that teenage years is kind of a difficult time because they're, they're kind of half in and half out. They're kind of an adult and not an adult, and they're kind of going that way, and it can be really difficult because it, it, they're, they're becoming independent. But that's part of our responsibility one day I am not going to be there for my kids. I am not there for my kids now. They make their own choices. And what we have to do is we have to prepare them for that time. Prepare them for that time when they will be doing it themselves. To trust in God. Not in me. Because one, one day I'm going to be gone. One day I'm not going to be here. Not just in location, but maybe even 
gone. But God will always be with it. Sent my son off to Iraq to fight in a war. What am I going to do? I can barely shoot a gun. How can I protect him in Iraq? God can. Sent a daughter down to South America to do a missions trip. Another son down to Mexico to do several missions trips. Got another daughter, no telling where she's at any time. She's running around all over Dayton. I can't protect them. But you know what? If they have Jesus, he's there with them all the time. They don't call me Harley, but they can call him anytime they want. We need to teach our children to trust in God. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, that's the best preparation you will make for your future. We buy insurance in case we have an accident. We do all kinds of things in preparation. Trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior will prepare you for eternity. The last point I want to make is this. Success occurs when opportunity and preparation meet. David was prepared. He was ready. Opportunity happened. Boom. He was the man. He was it. Could you, could you imagine the celebration that, that had over him whipping Goliath? And I, I would rather be prepared and not have the opportunity than to have the opportunity and not be prepared. And it goes in a lot, in a lot of life. But you know what? We, we need to realize that, you know what? God is preparing me for something right now. And I don't know why. I don't know why I'm going through this. And especially if you're going through a situation that you did not choose. But it chose you. God put it in your life for some reason. And he's preparing you for something. You have no idea what it is. But he is preparing you for something. To say, God, help me to learn my lesson and learn it as fast as I can. So I can get out of this class. Let me learn it. Back in 1990s, uh, my wife and I decided we felt God called us to start a church on the outside of Columbus, Ohio, Dublin, Ohio, Dublin, Hilliard area. And we felt God wanted us to do that. So we went and started a church. With about six months, we had about 70 people that were coming to church, and it was going really good. Some things began to happen, and I began to have to work a side job. I couldn't do it completely. And what we found out is we found out that it takes hard work to start a church. The church began to go down in numbers and began to go down in a lot of things. It just, it just was, wasn't working out. And to make a really hard, long story short, when the opportunity came to come to Adrian, we said, you know what, we're going to have to just disband the church. And we had them go into other churches in the area, and we just kind of dropped it. And I will be honest with you, I felt like a failure. When you tell other pastors that you're going to start a church, and they pray for you, and they give you money, and then you fail... I was embarrassed to show my face sometimes in front of pastors for them to ask me what happened. And I knew they wouldn't make fun of me but, or, or, and, and hurt me, but I was just embarrassed. I felt like I was a failure. We had this church and we started it in, in a, in a um, motel and we would haul things in and have the church service and haul them back out. And I thought, why would God, I thought he called, maybe he didn't call me. Maybe I just wanted to do it for some stupid reason. And I felt like a failure. So I came up here and had a little community and a little congregation and everything was going good until we had our church fire. And in 1996, Christmas, we had a church fire completely destroyed an old building. It was completely gone. I mean, it was, it was leveled. We, they had to bring it down all the way down to the concrete foundation. And we had nothing. And so I, I didn't know what to do. But all of a sudden, those skills that I learned when we started that church about having a temporary location, about moving stuff. As a matter of fact, even the sound system that we were using in Dublin, we used going to the Votech, and we used it there. And all of a sudden, I, I realized, you know what? Maybe that wasn't a failure. Maybe that was just preparing me to come up here to lead this church to go through a fire so that God could build us a great big building. You see, when you're in the middle of a, when you're in the middle of a class, sometimes you don't know why you're learning it. But God does. And God is preparing you for something. To say, Lord, help me to use the skill and the experience and the wisdom and the trust that you're giving me. And help me to keep my eyes open when the opportunity arises, you allow me to use it. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heads bowed and eyes closed. We talked about family. 
talked about raising kids. It's a difficult job. We've talked about trust in God. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We've talked about recognizing what you're going through now is giving you experience for what God has for you in the future and to trust him. If God's spoken to your heart in any way, we'd encourage you just to take a t- time of prayer. Spend some time and talk to God. Say, God, what, what's going on? If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would love for you just to surrender your life right now. Say, God, here I am. I really don't know what's in store for me, but I'm trusting you today. I give my life to you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for how you prepare us. That You're never absent. You're always working in our life. You're always moving us in a direction. You're always giving us tools and skills and abilities and experiences so that we can use them in the future, so that we can use them to help others, to help ourselves. Help us to recognize that and appreciate it. I pray especially for those who have never trusted Christ as their Savior. May they do that today. I pray for our families. I pray that whether we're parents or grandparents or whether we have nieces or nephews, the young children that are in our life, I pray that you would help us and give us wisdom to prepare them to be responsible adults that trust you and love you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.